Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Napur Mehta. Uh, I'm an internal medicine physician uh, who have been, has been practicing on the front lines of COVID uh, for the past year, but I also have the good fortune to be working with uh, an NGO based out of Boston called Partners in Health, uh, where uh, we've been supporting the Connecticut uh, Department of Public Health um, in terms of COVID response. And so today I'll be recording um, a trusted messenger forum specifically focused on the science of the vaccines um, and how trusted messengers can uh, equip people with the facts to help them make an informed decision about whether or not they want to take one of the vaccines. So before we dive in uh, too much about the vaccines themselves, I wanna talk a bit about the purpose of vaccination uh, for the population. And, and the real reason, and you probably all heard about this, is this idea of herd immunity. Um, but let's take a step back. Why do we care about herd immunity? It's because we wanna try to stop the virus from spreading. Um, and herd immunity or community immunity, which is, is probably a better term for it because we, we're, not, we're not cattle, um, is the point at which uh, we can be fairly confident that once this percentage of people has been uh, immunized in the population, that the virus can no longer spread as well as it has been previously. Now, the magic number that people have talked about is between 70% and 90% of the population having been either vaccinated or, uh, for any other reason, uh, immune to the, to the virus itself. Now, we know that that number is a very high number, um, but I think one common misconception is that it's all or nothing, that somehow if we don't reach 70%, that we are not making progress or that we're not going to be able to slow down the spread of this virus. And I want to make very clear that um, even if we don't hit that number um, of 70% or even higher, um, it doesn't mean that every next vaccination isn't important. As we get closer and closer to that number, the spread of the virus does continue to slow. So it just goes to show you that uh, every next vaccination, every next person we can become, uh, that we can immunize, um, does help to contribute to slowing down the virus. Now, getting to this goal um, is uh, met up with some challenges, right? Um, number one, and, and historically, uh, we're sitting here in April of uh, 2021, uh, up until about now, we've had difficulty with supply. Um, demand has far outstripped the supply of these vaccines, but as we sit here now, um, supply has really loosened up significantly, and pretty much anybody who wants to get a vaccine at this point can get one. Um, we are, however, in, in a bit of a race against time against new COVID variants. These new variants are easier to spread, and therefore the number of people or the speed at which we have to get people vaccinated has to be faster in order to offset the, the transmissibility of these new COVID variants. And of course, perhaps one of the biggest challenges that we're encountering is the issue around vaccine confidence, uh, the flip side of which, of course, is vaccine hesitancy. And that's really what we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about today is, is how to overcome um, lack of confidence in, in these vaccines. Now, we know that there are lots of barriers and reasons why people have, have trouble uh, accessing the vaccine. Um, in my opinion, they really fall into three big categories. Um, the first, of course, is structural. Um, and we have to acknowledge that there has been a history of systemic racism within uh, our country, as well as within the, within the healthcare um, system. And of course, many people um, have uh, internalized that and, and really don't believe that um, uh, the, the, the health system or the government is going to do right by them. Similarly, uh, people uh, often have a very hard time navigating uh, our very complicated healthcare system, especially people who have been historically marginalized. The second big um, challenge to accessing the COVID-19 vaccine has been informational. People have a hard time finding good information on how, whether it's uh, safe, whether it's effective, whether it's for them, whether they're eligible for the vaccine. Um, and of course, there's a lot of misinformation out there that's, that's uh, steering people the wrong direction. And of course, uh, you know, one of the biggest barriers has been logistical. Uh, people who don't have internet, for example, will, will have a really hard time scheduling on an online um, scheduling system. Uh, people who don't have a car are going to have a hard time going to one of these mass vaccination sites. Um, people, uh, many times on the flip side, you know, there aren't just, uh, frankly, enough vaccinators to meet the needs of the people who are wanting to, to get a vaccine. Um, on top of all that, we know that there are certain populations that 
have more challenges than others uh, accessing these vaccines. Of course, these are people that you know about. Um, they're folks who are low income. They may be not English speaking. They might be older or maybe even homebound. They might be very frail or disabled. Um, and of course, you know, folks who are uh, isolated due to geography or cultural practices or of course documentation status or even, um, like I said, uh, previously held beliefs about the vaccine are gonna be more, uh, have more challenges accessing the vaccine than others. In terms of this concept of, of vaccine confidence, we know that people exist on, on a pretty wide spectrum uh, of beliefs. Uh, on the far right-hand side of this graph, you can see that there are some people who really feel strongly that the vaccine is not for them, or maybe they don't even believe that COVID exists. Um, and and then right now, if you were to ask them, they might say that they will never get the vaccine or vaccines. Um, on the far left-hand side of this graph, however, people who are really itching to get it right now, they, they have all the information that they need, they really wanna get it. Um, all they need, uh, frankly, at this point is to get the, the shot in the arm. And of course, there's everybody in between. Um, and you know what I've been telling folks is that it's gonna be very difficult to move someone from the right-hand side of this graph in the red zone all the way to the green zone in one conversation. And that's okay. Um, many times it's going to require several different conversations in several different ways um, in order to move people up. And so our goal as trusted messengers might be to just help move people up a level. Um, and then it might require several conversations to get them to the point where they have enough information that they might be willing to uh, get the vaccine, or if they're not still going to get the vaccine, at least they have the right information to be able to make an educated uh, decision uh, for themselves. So what I uh, get to speak to you about today is actually what are those facts? Um, what are the true um, pieces about these vaccines that you as trusted messengers can take to the people that you're working with um, that are the truth uh, about these vaccines that can hopefully by and large um, help to assuage some of the concerns that people are having. So if, if you walk away from this uh, webinar with anything, I hope that you'll walk away with one of, uh, you know, no understanding these six pieces um, in detail. So fact number one, uh, these COVID-19 vaccines cannot give you COVID-19. Now, th there are vaccines that are out there that contain uh, sort of an attenuated virus or sort of killed virus. These are not, uh, none of these vaccines um, are anything like that. They have no ability to actually give you the, the virus. And in fact, if you do end up contracting the virus, it's either because you are not yet immunized or the vaccines hadn't had time to kick in yet, or uh, because you are one of these very rare breakthrough cases of people who have been vaccinated, but uh, go on to contract the, the disease anyway. Fact number two, that the de rapid development of these vaccines does not mean that they're not safe. Um, and in fact, I think one thing that people don't fully realize is that the whole purpose of mRNA technology or some of these other technologies was in fact to be able to respond to a global pandemic like these. Um, when these technologies, which have been around for quite a while, actually almost over a decade, um, were invented, they were basically made for a situation like uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, where we needed to be able to generate, manufacture, and test these vaccines very, very quickly um, in order to be able to respond to an emergency. And so in some ways, the speed at which these have been deployed is a testament to what they were created for in the first place. Um, secondly, of course, we know that there's been quite a, bun uh, quite a bit of funding that has been put towards uh, the development and testing of these vaccines. And so, you know, suffice to say that no corners were cut in the approval of these vaccines. Um, and, and so you can have confidence that um, all of the necessary uh, safety and efficacy measures were, were followed. Fact number three, and this is a, a very good thing. So far, sitting here in April of 2021, um, these uh, vaccines do protect against multiple strains, including the widely circulating strains uh, that are uh, currently in the United States, including the uh, UK variant, um, as well as the Brazil and South Africa variants. Fact number four, um, these COVID-19 vaccines cannot have no ability to change your DNA. Um, of course, in the case of the mRNA vaccines, they're not related to DNA at all. In fact, um, our body is making tons and tons of mRNA uh, each and every day, every second of every day. Um, it's the way that our body makes proteins. Um, and so these mRNA vaccines are just another mRNA copy amongst all the other ones that our body's making anyway. In the case of the DNA vaccines, uh, like the Johnson Johnson vaccine, uh, it has no ability to actually integrate or uh, influence or change your own DNA. Uh, as soon as it makes it uh, does its job, it is promptly destroyed um, and, and, uh, and, and it's gone from the body. Fact number five, 
Um, these vaccines have not been related or uh, impact, uh, linked to miscarriage or infertility, uh, the ability to fall pregnant or to carry a pregnancy to term. Um, in fact, as, uh, as we've learned more about these vaccines, they've been very, very safe um, in pregnant women or uh, people who intend to become pregnant. Um, and in fact, we've seen that uh, circulating antibodies uh, in the mother do trans, uh, transfer to the fetus. And so um, in many ways, uh, if you think about it, the, the uh, maternal antibodies actually will help protect the, the infant as well. And so, um, you know, there's lots of reasons why, in fact, uh, pregnant women or people who intend to fall pregnant should, in fact, get the vaccine because we know that uh, pregnant women are indeed uh, immunocompromised relative to non-pregnant women. And so, uh, if anything, uh, we should encourage people who are pregnant to get vaccinated. And fact number six, uh, which is, uh, you know, unfortunate misconception is that we don't know what's in these vaccines, but indeed, we know exactly what is contained in these vaccines. And in fact, the ingredient list is very basic. Um, it's all very um, simple ingredients like salts and sugar and water, of course, plus the, the mRNA or DNA material, as well as uh, whatever transporter is uh, bringing that genetic material to the cells so that they can go ahead and start making antibodies. So in some ways, these, um, these vaccines are, are incredibly safe. One question that we always get asked is, what do we not know um, of all these things that we do know? There's a couple of things that we, we don't know. I think that one of the things that we don't know is about boosters and whether or not we're going to require uh, boosters in order to maintain our immunity. And I think right now, nine months into the pandemic and nine months of uh, sort of knowledge base with these um, vaccines does suggest that the uh, immunity is pretty durable, meaning it lasts quite a while. But I think the jury's still out on whether or not we will need a booster to help uh, maintain or sustain immunity, especially as these new variants continue to circulate. Another thing, another thing that we don't fully know, although we have some good evidence, is whether or not these uh, vaccines prevent asymptomatic spread. I think uh, the trials were not made to test specifically for asymptomatic spread. However, um, the early information and sort of uh, what I think will hopefully come out soon is that uh, indeed these vaccines not only prevent symptomatic disease, but they also prevent asymptomatic disease and asymptomatic spread on that basis. Please take a look uh, at other uh, videos as they come out, uh, touching on more detailed topics. Uh, for now, we will sign off on this one. Thank you.